asked over 80,000 designers to send in their most burning questions for me to answer. And I noticed one big theme that just kept popping up. So let's answer the question. How do you actually price yourself as a designer? Well, there's two important things you need to know in order to price yourself correctly, plus one handy calculation. But first, Here's how the video is gonna go. It will be split up into three segments where I answer three of the most requested questions you guys had for me. Between each question, we will do a quick fire round where I will answer as many of your questions in two minutes. Sound good? Let's go. So when it comes to pricing yourself, there are two roads that you can go down. One is charging an hourly rate and the other is a project rate. I personally prefer charging a project rate, which is a flat fee for the scope and the deliverables of a project. I find you are punished for working quickly when charging an hourly rate. Whatever one you decide to do, you can do the following equation that will help you estimate the amount you need to charge. First, we need to work out your monthly expenses. This includes things like bills, cost of living, food, Food, business expenses, etc. Basically, how much money you need to earn in order to survive. So once we've got this figure, we would times it by 0.2. This would give us a rough estimate on how much we would be taxed. This can vary depending on your income and country. Once done, add this figure to your monthly expenses. This figure then shows you how much you need to earn each month to survive. Next step is dependent on how many clients you take on in a month. We will use an example of a designer who takes on four. In their case, they will divide this figure by four, which will give them the minimum they need to charge per project. Now you have this figure, you can work out the profit you want to earn on top of this. Working out this figure can be influenced by a few things, your experience, your skills, your confidence, and your demand for work. There is no right or wrong when it comes to pricing. It's all just about increasing as your business, confidence, skills, and knowledge grows. And remember, it's fine to change your pricing. Now it's time for our first quick fire round. I'll put two minutes on the clock, let's go. I did when wireframing and designing my website, but I haven't used it in a while, but I do like it though. At a holiday resort for four years as a graphic designer, creating things like posters and leaflets, that kind of stuff. I personally don't sketch as I prefer going straight into Adobe Illustrator, but I do know some designers that find it a beneficial step of their creative process. It is a personal preference, so just do what you prefer. The majority of the time, yes, they should source this from their manufacturer. If not, you can create and source a custom die line from websites like die cut templates. I'll leave a link in my description. No, I don't create my own mock-ups because I just don't have the time, but a great alternative to this is using mock-up templates. My go-to platform for this is Invato Elements, which is today's sponsor of the video. They provide a massive selection of mock-up templates and fonts also, another thing they offer that I don't think a lot of people know about is video templates for logo reveals. It's such a handy way of showcasing your work on social media. If you want to check them out, make sure you click the first link in my description. I've actually never read a design book, but I've heard really good things about the book, The Design of Everyday Things. I now take on one big branding project a month as I have other things that need my time like this YouTube channel. When my time was solely on client work, I would take around two to three brand identity projects each month. Here's a quick snapshot, but you'll have to wait for the rest. As soon as it's ready, I will do a dedicated video on it. YouTube and Instagram, they tend to find me there, like my work and then inquire. Be okay with learning on the way and not having everything figured out because you're never gonna feel completely ready and building an online presence is the best way to get clients. <sighs> that was stressful. But now we're gonna move on to answering a question about how I deal with imposter syndrome. So at the start of my design journey, I struggled with imposter syndrome quite a lot. I think it's really easy to feel it in an industry like design where everyone's work and opinion on what good design is, is so different. Art is probably the most subjective thing there is. So of course, us designers are gonna doubt ourselves and feel like we're not good enough. I think the key to overcoming this is to just embrace it, accept that it's a natural part of the journey and know that it gets better with time as your confidence, experience and skills improve. 
Realizing that everyone gets imposter syndrome at some point along their journey should show you that it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to feel like you don't belong or that you're not good enough. It's part of the process, but the most successful designers and business owners know that that feeling of being an imposter is temporary and will pass. And most importantly, they don't let that feeling stop them from achieving their goals. On to the second quick fire round. I'll put another two minutes on the clock. Let's go. So I use WISE, which has the lowest currency conversion fees, and it's really simple to use. I'll leave a link in my description. Passion projects. You get to experiment and be as creative as you want, try out a load of different styles, and figure out exactly what you like and what you don't. I also found when working with clients, the projects that included bold colors and quirky ideas were the ones that fueled me with fire and I enjoyed the most. So I explored this direction and style a lot more. Break your big goal into small actionable daily habits, then it becomes part of your routine. For example, if the goal is to put out five pieces of content on social media a week, the daily habit would be to set aside 30 minutes each day to work on this content. Whatever you can afford. I currently use a 2019 iMac, but anything with at least 16 gig of RAM and a screen with decent color accuracy would be good. Yes, I actually have. Sometimes businesses just can't afford what you charge. But what the majority are actually saying when they say you're too expensive is, you haven't given me enough perceived value, so I don't think you're worth it. Don't sell your services to a client, sell them their desired outcome. For example, a greater brand awareness leading to more customers through the door. Truth is, you don't. You just have to believe in yourself and trust the process. Everyone has self-doubt, it's part of the journey. I would say as long as you're staying true to yourself and it feels right, that's the way to go. No, this never works. It's like going in for a kiss too early on the first date. You're setting yourself up for rejection. Get to know them first. This video should help. And the time is up. I feel like I'm losing my voice slightly from talking so quickly. So hopefully my answers have still been useful though. Now we're gonna move on to the last question in the Q&A. So how do you manage social media as a shy introvert? First off, I would say focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. If you don't like being on camera, you don't have to be. There are lots of other ways you can go about showing your personality and creating content. Start a podcast, write a blog, put out long informative posts. Yes, I think it's important to show your face every now and then to show that there is a human behind the business. This is important because people buy from people, not businesses. That's why influencer marketing is so big now. But focus on what you can do rather than what you can't. There isn't a one size fits all approach. For example, example, there are massive YouTube channels that have never shown their face. One thing I would say is that I was also so shy at the start of my journey and would have never imagined I'd be talking to the camera. By pushing yourself out your comfort zone, a lot of things are actually possible. You don't know until you try these things, so challenge yourself to show up more on social media and see what happens. Lastly, one of the most asked questions I get is how to get clients. And if you're one of these people, then you need to watch this video right here, where I share all of my knowledge on how to actually get clients. I'll see you at the next video.